Hello, my absolutely beautiful Libra friends, and welcome to your horoscope for March of 2022, where Libra, this month, we do get to feel the energetic pull of planets moving forward, decisions being made. We're going to also come into Aries season. We get decisive, we get impulsive, but it does mean that things are moving. Now, we are going to have one planet step into its pre-retrograde shadow time, and I will talk about that. But other than that, welcome to March. We're no longer on that whole that we were feeling between November and February. Now we can move forward and it is a good time this month because you get lit up in your fifth house. You get lit up in your seventh house. Your pleasure zones get stimulated by Mars and Venus. So there's plenty of good stuff on the table to work with this month, Libra. So let's jump in here and talk about what is going on in all of this goodness, okay? Right at the beginning of the month, Libra, on the second we are going to have a new moon in the energy of Pisces. Now this is going to light up your sixth house space. So when we're talking about the sixth house, we think of daily routines, work, health, fitness, including your diet, your um, medical practitioners, or maybe you see, you know, a doctor, a neurologist, a naturopath, whoever you see that also helps to be of service to your health, you can think about them in the sixth house as well. Who do you help be of service? Are you a caretaker to someone? Co-workers go in this particular house, projects that work, all of those kinds of things fit into the sixth house as well. Now, having this new moon at 12 degrees of Pisces, you get to plant your seeds of intention to begin something new here. <clears throat> in the energy of Pisces, one of the things I would ask you, Libra, is in your daily routines, in what you want to work, and what you want to bring to the surface or give a fresh energy to, when you put your hand on your heart, what do you feel, what do you sense in your intuition and in your vibration that you'd like this area of your life to look like? Where do you feel like you need a little bit more um, clarity in the sixth house area for you? Where would you like help bringing something to culmination or transition so that you can move on to what it needs to be next? Plant your seeds of intention at this particular moon and in just a couple weeks, you're also gonna get some help making decisions to move this area along as well. When we get to the sixth, we're gonna see Mars move into the energy of Aquarius, lighting up your fifth house space. Now in the fifth house, we're doing pleasure romance, things with children, conception is in the fifth house. And it's not just conception of children, okay? You could also be adopting children, things with your step children. You could be conceiving a new business. You could be taking a risk on something. I'm thinking gambling, if that's your thing. Stock market things. Maybe you're just moving towards Bitcoin, NFTs, any of those things. This is all fifth house as well. But the thing I like to focus on, Libra, is that this is a pleasure center. And in order to enjoy the pleasure, you have to take a little bit of a risk with it. So with Mars moving into this area, and it's very Aquarian, you know, are you doing something online that is actually bringing you pleasure or doing something with a grouping of people or are you taking action mars to move offline for a little bit because you feel like that will help you achieve your goal in this energy of aquarius do you need to move away from the groupings of people a little bit now on the same day just a few minutes later we're going to see venus move into the energy of aquarius as well so again still in this fifth house but now the lovers are traveling together in your pleasure center zone and i'm going to tell you connect with people Enjoy and celebrate the deliciousness of your own independence and what that adds to the whole. But my goodness, use that combination of the magnetism and the harmony that Venus and Mars have together to not be so emotional about what's going on in your life and instead take the action. Think through what brings you pleasure. Be mentally stimulated, you know, instead of doing, 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 sit down and actually allow yourself to watch that movie if it brings you a little bit of pleasure. Remember, Aquarius is an air sign, so it's not overly emotional and a little bit more intellectual. And it is okay to be intellectually stimulated as much as it is to be stimulated and pleasured in any other way. On the 7th, we're going to see Neptune move into its pre-retrograde shadow time at 22 degrees of Pisces, so it begins a slowdown. Now, I know Neptune is an outer planet, so sometimes it's, it's more subtle and it's harder to pick up on that retrograde vibration until it gets closer. But just know it is going to begin its 
post pre-retrograde shadow time and it will actually take that retrograde in June okay now on the 9th we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Pisces so at the beginning of the month we have the new moon where you planted those seeds of intention to begin something the energy start to work things start to take a little bit of a direction clarity comes around some things and then we get Mercury coming into that same area that you asked to have a different start Mercury is still our decision-making planet we're thinking we're communicating we are making decisions it's very business savvy as well as communication savvy so now Mercury will help this area become what it needs to be next but it is not going to do it by high intellectual capacity mercury in the energy of pisces is considered to be in fall so not in its strongest position and it's because mercury wants answers it's moving like this it wants to do things and it wants the facts don't give me anything vague and pisces is like let me give you this vague answer right and so pisces is like well everything is everything and mercury finds this unacceptable so mercury in the energy of pisces in order to assist this new moon request you have made will work in the space of emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence. It may feel slower. I would tell you, trust your dreams around your work, your projects, your health. Um, tune in, especially to the quiet vibration of what it is that you really need what really fills your soul and sings to you on a daily basis because mercury is going to whip and zip through this pisces energy get out of it by the end of the month so enjoy the mercurial energy here low and slow be creative and enjoy the intuition when we get to the 18th we've got our full moon for the month at 27 degrees of Virgo okay now this is going to light up your 12th house space so just right behind you now the full moon says that something needs to be ended acknowledged or adjusted so we need to make some kind of shift or change of direction here in the energy of Virgo Virgo's gift is discernment it can look at the patterns in your life and say this is efficient this is ineffective this is not the best tool to use over here whatever it is Virgo's gift is to pick out how to help this area be the very best that that it can be for you and for your life so under this full moon in your 12th house if you're seeing I'm kind of disconnected from my daily routine or you're feeling like your you your meditation is not what it used to be that's not the best tool in your life if you've got sabotaging behaviors Virgo will likely point this out to you in your 12th house space just as much as it can help you uncover what you need in terms of your research or the direction of your next project or something that you're working on behind the scenes I also think that Virgo naturally is a healing energy so if there is something especially things that have come back during the retrograde that needed some healing like it was tough and you needed some help you needed some salve on that Virgo can actually be very good at that as well now on the 20th we welcome the Sun into the energy of Aries we will welcome in a new season depending on where you are here in the United States we're gonna welcome in spring Sun in Aries lights up your seventh house um, space it's across the street in the opposite energy for you right so now the Sun is gonna bring this motivation you've got things going on in relationships which are a natural relationship energy but in the presence of Aries Aries does not make decisions like you do so the Sun is very specific it is very decisive it is very direct there's no going between two things there's no thinking about how this affects everybody so in your seventh house area in your relationships you could find yourself being very very decisive and you will probably need to watch this line between assertive and aggressive right and that's okay but you will definitely be working with some energy that is moving very very quickly now the one thing that I think we want to always be mindful of no matter who you are during Aries season is to try to not just be so impulsive right you just feel froggy so you jump right <laughs> so that's something you might want to watch and you can also just watch though as the Sun is here how much your life fills up with people who have significant presence in your relationship life now on the 27th we're also going to see mercury now move into the energy of Aries as well so Sun and Mercury are over here traveling through and I'm telling you when you're in a group or you're doing things with people and they're like let's talk about it you may be like no let's be about it decisive you just become Become very decisive which sometimes is a little bit uncomfortable for you Libra but this is a wonderful season to remember that somebody's got to help make the decisions and all also Aries is a pioneering energy so the way that you're moving forward everything you've seen 
um, Libra during this retrograde. Now you're applying new solutions, new ideas, and new actions into your life, into the relationships around you. So this is actually a time to be decisive, to be independent in what you're thinking. Consider how it makes you feel, not just how it makes the group feel, and move in the direction of that particular energy. So I think March has got a lot to offer us, Libra. I look forward to joining you along the path and along the way. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Please let me know how the relationships are manifesting for you as we travel through March. I look forward to seeing you guys soon, and I will talk to you every week and, of course, next month. Bye, Libras.